This program explores the use and application of the bonding triangle. Let's start by reviewing very quickly the participants in each of our types of bonds. In the case of a covalent bond, we have a non-metal bonding to a non-metal. In the case of metallic bonding, we just have metals. And lastly, our ionic bond involves non-metals and metals. And in there lies the problem. What we classify as a non-metal, what we classify as a metal, isn't a black and white decision. Many elements exhibit properties that are more towards one than the other, but not entirely, rather like shades of gray. With that in mind, we need to take another approach to how we look at substances. That approach involves the use of something we call the bonding triangle which explores some of the characteristics of either metallic, covalent, and ionic substances. You'll see that it's based upon ideas around electronegativity. So it's probably worthwhile here to explore some of the properties of electronegativity. First of all, its symbol is chi, and you can see it present in the equations down here. Its definition, it's the attraction for the electrons in a bond. And what are some of the trends and patterns we see in electronegativity? Well, let's explore a family or group, fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, which you can see here. As you move down the periodic table, we notice a reduction in electronegativity. That occurs because we have more energy levels, and the distance between the nucleus and the valence electrons, those that are involved in bonding, becomes greater. Now let's look at the pattern as we move across the periodic table from left to right. We'll notice here an increase in electronegativity. That's because there's a greater effective nuclear charge as we move across the periodic table. That greater effective nuclear charge increases the force of attraction on the electrons in the bond. So now let's do a question dealing with the use of this triangle. I want to compare the bonding in aluminum chloride to that in sodium chloride, which is more ionic. First thing I'm going to need are values of electronegativity. So from our periodic table, sodium is 0.9, aluminum 1.6, and chlorine 3.2. First of all, let's consider sodium chloride. Well, if we look at the difference in electronegativity of my two substances, I'm going to use here the absolute value. Um, I'm going to take um, my sodium 0.9 and chlorine 3.2. And that difference then in electronegativity is 2.3. So that's going to put me somewhere on this line. And now what's the average electronegativity of my two substances? So 0.9 plus 3.2 divide by 2, and I get something around 2.0. And that then if I go straight up, from there takes me to a position right there. So that's where I would find my sodium chloride. So if I was to look at describing its particular bonding, I can see over here that it's about 75% ionic in nature. So 75% ionic. We'll do the same thing now with our aluminum chloride. Um, first of all, the difference in electronegativity of the two substances, uh, 1.6 and 3.2, 2.0. 
Again, the absolute value um, gives me 1.6. So that puts me somewhere on this line. And our average 1.6 plus 3.2 divided by 2 gives me about 2.4. So that then would be somewhere uh, per se about here. Pretty much right at the borderline between the two um, regions, the ionic and the covalent region. And describing its characteristics would be there. So it's 50% ionic. So to answer my question, sodium chloride would be the more ionic of the two.